Uh, the next speaker I'd like to introduce you to, uh, in my opinion, is one of the most influential people in blockchain and Bitcoin. Um, he is the founder of Bitcoin.com, uh, my friend, Roger Veer. Thank you, Brian. And for those that don't know, we first met quite a few years ago at the Bitcoin space here in Tokyo. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, where we are at today with cryptocurrencies. For those that don't know, I was the first person in the entire world to start investing in this ecosystem. And uh, lots and lots has happened. I've been involved in about, for about nine and a half years now. And we can look back. Well, how did we get to where we are today? Well, it all started with the Bit Satoshi Nakamoto white paper. And yes, it's true, there was stuff happening before that, but this is what really got things started. And we can see right there in the title is that Bitcoin, it's a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And I've emphasized the word cash there because I think that's a very important part of what this is supposed to be all about. And we can see here on the left, there's lots of stuff happening on, but I'll, 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 I'll break it down so we can see right here. The blue stuff that we see here, that's the number of transactions uh, happening each day on the blockchain and the size of the blocks for the Bitcoin blockchain. And we can see way back in uh, 2015, it was about a third of a megabyte. And it was growing year after year as more and more people started to use Bitcoin as cash. And more and more people were starting to use it to buy and sell things and make payments and do things all over the world. Because as I've been saying since 2011, Bitcoin allows anyone to send and receive any amount of money with anyone, anywhere, instantly, basically for free, and they don't need permission from anybody to do that. And that's an incredibly powerful proposition. And because it's so incredibly useful and powerful, we can see more and more people started using it around the world until we bumped into this one megabyte block size limit. And you can see the transactions were going up and up and up and up. And then it hit that limit and it was flat from there. And then a little bit later, there's this other thing. If you're really deep into Bitcoin and nerdy, there's this thing called SegWit right here. And you can see it gave us a little bit of additional capacity there. And we can see very clearly here the correlation between the number of transactions happening per day in yellow and then the price of Bitcoin in the, the dark gray or black here. And you can see a very, very strong correlation there. As more and more people started making payments with Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin went up because, as everybody knows, the price is set by supply and demand. As more and more people demand to use Bitcoin in payments, because that supply is fixed, the price has to go up in order to accommodate that additional demand. Uh, so that brings us to, well, what happened here, right? We, we bumped into that one megabyte limit. Bitcoin wasn't able to scale to allow more people to use it each day. Well, that brings me to my background in economics, and there's a very basic concept in economics, but if you haven't thought about very basic things, you won't be aware of it, and this concept is called substitute goods theory. And it's so simple. If Coca-Cola started costing $100 a can, a lot more people would start drinking Pepsi. Or if McDonald's started charging $100 a hamburger, a lot more people would eat, start eating Burger King, or you know, bento boxes from Yoshinoya here in Japan. And it's like that with everything. When one thing costs more to use, and not necessarily cost in, in terms of money to use, but in time or effort or, or any, any sort of resource, people start searching for alternatives. And so we can see on the screen here, Coke and Pepsi, Colgate and Crest, McDonald's and Burger King, coffee and tea, all of these things are competing with everything else for share in the marketplace. And that's exactly what happened within the cryptocurrency marketplace. There used to just be one single Bitcoin and all these exchanges were called Bitcoin exchanges, and every business was called a Bitcoin business. But today we have cryptocurrency exchanges, and cryptocurrency wallets, and cryptocurrency this, and cryptocurrency that, because there's literally thousands of cryptocurrencies in the world today, and they're all competing with each other for share in the marketplace. And for us as consumers in that marketplace, we all decide, do we like Burger King or McDonald's better? Do we like uh, you know, Crest or Colgate better? Do we like Bitcoin Core, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, on and on and on to thousands of different options there. And so we as consumers, this is a good thing. We get to choose which one suits our needs the best. And if you like any of these, that's fine. If you don't like any of them, that's fine. Just like some people prefer McDonald's to Burger King and other people prefer Burger King to McDonald's and some people don't like either one. And that's the beauty of the free market and competition within the market because everybody gets to have the option that they like the best. And I'm going to talk about one of the options that uh, I like the best, right? And if you want to know which one of these cryptocurrencies is going to get the most traction, well, the easiest way to pr predict the future is to invent it yourself. 
And that's what myself and my team of over 100 really passionate people at Bitcoin.com are busy doing. And that's why we're all busy working on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain today. Because I think it has the best characteristics to provide the best user experience for people that want to send and receive money around the world and do tokens and security offerings and all sorts of fun things. And so Bitcoin Cash right now today, a lot of people don't realize this, it's number four in terms of market cap, but it's number one in terms of worldwide physical exception uh, uh, and adoption at physical shops. In fact, within walking distance of right here, there's more than a dozen shops here in Tokyo. You can go and spend your Bitcoin Cash right now today. There's almost none that you can go and spend the thing that everybody's still calling Bitcoin today. And commerce, right? Bitcoin Cash today already scales to commercial levels greater than PayPal. Uh, it can do about 100 transactions a, th a second right now today on the main chain. And uh, on testnet, it's already scaled to more than tens of thousands of transactions in a single second. And there's additional improvements coming that allow the transactions on Bitcoin Cash to be validated as good enough to accept in commerce in about a second and a half, which means you'll be able to send and receive any amount of money with anyone anywhere in the world instantly, meaning about a second and a half for a fraction of a penny. That's really powerful and really, really useful in commerce. We also have tokens. You can create a token for about a tenth of a penny or a tenth of a yen and then send that token to anyone anywhere in the world instantly, just like that. You can do the whole thing in about two minutes if you've never done it before. I've made some tutorial videos on YouTube. So if you search Bitcoin Cash tokens on YouTube, you can see some tutorials on how to do that. Um, smart contracts are available on Bitcoin Cash as well. There's a whole robust scripting language to do all sorts of interesting things on top of Bitcoin Cash as well. Uh, privacy tools are available. So you don't want the entire world to have a copy of your checking uh, account transaction history. So we have privacy tools with Bitcoin Cash as well. So you can make public the data you want to make public, but you can keep private the, the details of your financial transactions that you want to keep private. And uh, cashshuffle.org is a fantastic website with that. And there's more and more tools coming out in regards to that all the time. And uh, Cash ID, right? Like if anybody's seen a Bitcoin address, it's impossible for a human being to remember. It's blah, 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 a bunch of random letters and numbers, impossible to remember. Well, Bitcoin Cash has a thing called Cash ID, which takes an address that looks like that thing at the top there that starts with a Q, and it can just become something like Roger Pound 139. And that's easy to remember, Roger Pound 139. If you want to send me money, you can use that instead of having to remember that really big, long, impossible to remember thing. And that's already supported in the Badger wallet and coming to more and more wallets uh, across the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem. Uh, and the Bitcoin Cash, I'm sorry, the Badger wallet for Bitcoin Cash is a really amazing tool where you can send and receive tokens. Soon you'll be able to create tokens right within the wallet. Uh, it's really a, your key to this entire amazing ecosystem that's happening uh, on top of Bitcoin Cash. And uh, markets, a really, really fun one that I'm excited about. Uh, we just launched using local.bitcoin.com as the domain names, so using a smart contract on Bitcoin Cash. You can now buy and sell any amount of Bitcoin Cash with anyone in any country for any payment method in any amount. And because Bitcoin.com is never touching the money, it's just a smart contract on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain, there's no KYC requirements from Bitcoin.com. The only KYC requirements are between the two people engaging in the transaction. So you can now literally buy or sell any amount of Bitcoin Cash for any payment method in any country. You're dealing direct with the person that you're dealing with, but you can do it in a safe way, a safe way using what we're calling a self-custodial escrow. The Bitcoin Cash is held in an escrow, but there's no third-party escrow agent that can run away with the funds. Only the people doing the trade ever touch the money in any way. So uh, that brings us to a whole new term, right? We have smart money with non-custodial financial services. Before the invention of cryptocurrencies, every single financial service took custody of the funds. They held people's money. They took money from one person, took custody of those funds, and then gave money to somebody else. Well, now with Bitcoin Cash and cryptocurrencies, we can have this whole new breed of, of non-custodial financial services. And local.bitcoin.com is just one example of that. And we're going to see more and more of that uh, spread all across the world. And I think it's a really, really big deal. Don't underestimate the importance of these new non-custodial financial services businesses that are launching. And uh, that brings us back to where we're at today. We're back again to Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. But it's no longer called Bitcoin today. It's called Bitcoin Cash. 
And that's why myself and all of my effort and my time are busy promoting Bitcoin Cash. And that's not to say anything bad about these other blockchains, but I'm the most excited about Bitcoin Cash because I think it has the ability to bring the most, the best user experience for the most number of people around the world in any country of any age group of any demographic. Bitcoin Cash works for anybody, whether you're a billionaire or someone who earns less than $2 a day. Bitcoin Cash can work for you right now, today, for everyone all over the planet. And that's why I'm so excited about it. And uh, that's me. I was the first person in the entire world to start investing in this ecosystem. And I'm still, I'm, e I'm even more excited about it today than when I first got involved. And uh, if you uh, catch me at any point in the, uh, in the conference here, install the Bitcoin.com wallet and I'll give you some free Bitcoin Cash. You literally don't have to give your name. You don't have to give your email. You don't have to give any information at all other than install a free app. We did it behind stage. Yeah, it was so easy. I don't know if I'm going to give everybody Ichiman in, but uh, it's so easy. You literally, it takes longer to download the app than it does to start using it. So thank you all very much for your time.